Hello and welcome to Three Wide No Cover. It's a huge show today because we are looking forward to the Group 2 Fiend Stakes at the Valley this weekend. Could be wet and wild conditions, we'll find out. But uh, in terms of the team, as always, around the round table here, SD, we'll start with you. Welcome. The inaugural show from the host last week, Grace. The reviews that have come back through, fantastic <laughs> by you. Outstanding for steering the ship in the right direction. Uh, well done, team. Collectively, clappy, clappy. Uh, tips hitting the board left, right and centre. So uh, as long as we're tipping winners, I think we'll stay alive and keep our job. Jules Lance, do you have something to say about that? Yeah, well, if we don't tip winners, that means we lose our job. So <laughs> we've just got to be careful there, what you say. Um, very tricky day for Saturday yep. because obviously we're going to get to the track and the weather and all that kind of stuff. It was one of those perfect storms last Saturday and I think for the punters out there, they've got to understand they're the days that don't come around too often with Caulfield, runs really straight. Just buyer beware this Saturday. Mm -hmm. Don't because you've got your pockets full, get excited and start throwing money everywhere. Just relax oh, because it's, relax. Going to, it's a tough day. It's and a really tough day. Congratulations on having a first crack at cutting your own hair. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, uh, it's I put a racing stripe in too. It's, it's a pass. It's come up well. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's I good. was going to try and get a Z in because Zark is back, by the way, north of the border on Saturday <laughs> too. Don't think he'll ever get beaten again. But um, trying to get a Z in there, but ended up just with a stripe. Too hard. So good. Too hard that's what's you. happening in lockdown. Pat Garshagan, are you going to borrow the clippers? Oh, I probably need to, to be honest. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit loose and fair out the top. But, Jules, if you find it, say it's tough, I just don't think we're looking hard enough this week. Well, that's, that's a good way to look at it. That's awesome. Um, awesome. <laughs> you don't get lucky. We just uh, work hard and lucky you get, isn't it? No, certainly fair enough. Grace, I've got a question for you. Yep. What's the damage, Grace Ramage? Well, this is a fancy new segment, isn't it? Because last week there was too much good new stuff. So we've saved this for the second show of the season. And we're looking back at how we fared because it's good to keep us accountable. But uh, I guess there's a little bit of head wobble going on for this week. It won't always be like this. Plenty of green ticks there. Well done, team. Good job. Green with envy. Yep, that's that. the way. Oh, so this is how we bear. went. And um, this was around the country as well. From last week, um, mainly... Part of there was scratched. He's going to run at the Valley, Grace. Exactly. Uh, Julesy loves him. I hope he's tipping him again. Uh, spoiler alert. Oh, he ain't. And uh, also... Um, <laughs> Yourself as well. That was a great effort there around the country as well. Thanks. Absolutely nailed it. Thanks, Grace. So, well, the blind chicken finds a piece of corn every <laughs> now and then. So, you know, it works. But no, very exciting to, uh, to to find a couple. And I'm going a little bit ambitious this week. So hopefully, I can pick up where I left off. And I understand that there have been a couple of things that have pricked your ears throughout the week. What can you tell us? <laughs> they certainly have. Well, I think a few people have seen this footage, um, which will be popping up very shortly. Uh, look at this, this is a horse race. So, you've seen it, Jules? Grace. No, I haven't. You haven't seen this? Well, no. have a look what happens here. Yeah. Nibble, nibble, nibble. That's like me getting stuck in my zinger box at 4 a.m. Luckily, the horse uh, on the inside gets the chocolates and we avoid a disaster. We'll just watch it one more time. He was actually going past to win, it, horse on the outside, and just through his competitive uh, nature and his will to hate the other horse, he just wanted to bite uh, his head off. Very, very hungry now. Just with that, so, you know, you're going to go, Jules, going to say, SD, what? As a person on top, what are you trying to do there? Because are you just trying to straighten him up or are you just saying, come on, boy, what, what actually the skill that you are required to getting back on the job? You're trying to feed your family and win the race, that's <laughs> for sure. And what are you trying to do? But there's a little piece of uh, thin uh, steel that runs through a horse's teeth. The front, they have their pickers and in the middle, there's a gap where that steel piece of uh, uh, rod, that uh, bridle we call goes through, then that's your power steering. And then they've got the grinders at the back. And then once they take control and they go numb on the side of their cheeks, you have no control over a 500 kilo horse. And you can see the jock wanting to get that horse uh, straightened up, pull the right rein, but uh, the horse is having none of that. He was just a nasty piece of work. He was, uh, Stan. I'm glad you explained uh, you know, chewing away because someone else who uh, bit off a little bit more oh. than he could chew one day was this man. Oh, oh. <laughs> the old uh, <laughs> chocolate gate, wasn't it? Remember this, Steve, when you, uh, you were told, oh. look at your face there, you've been told you're on air in three. Three minutes <laughs> to 30 <laughs> seconds. Three minutes to 30 <laughs> seconds, and then I'm coming oh, back right. to do an integration. Uh, 2,600 metre benchmark. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolute <laughs> gold. Oh, I've never got sold. I've never got sold. I've meant to roll that footage a little bit quicker, but what it's there to hijack the segment of touch. Was it a it, Twix? It, it was a lovely Cavalry's assortment, but oh. I've got to say, Gator and uh, Richo were on my left hand wow. side. Absolutely giving it to me. I had no hope of recovering for that integration. <laughs> but the, from 30 minutes to eat two blocks of chocolate, like little, little square blocks, 
to 30 seconds, you got to chew it real quick and yeah. think. You, your face Ready? when you realise the cue in your ear, saying you're on in three seconds, and you just see the sports bet stinger coming up in the background. We've all been there, though. Once the giggles get it, get up there, and they stay up there, you cannot recover. Yeah, good try. Yeah. Good attempt at saving that one. Thanks for showing that. <laughs> now, Esther, it's your turn, um, because we like to discuss yep. things that you really want to get off your chest, and you're fired up about something. Yeah, well, there's been a bit of news in the media uh, recently with uh, jockeys uh, being suspended which means that uh, it opens up uh, the door for opportunities for jockeys that will put their hand up and say, well, what about me? It isn't fair. I'm not getting on the best horses and I never really get a chance. Now, I've made a list here. So jockeys time to shine this spring carnival in particular with Sydney lockdown, Brisbane, other champion jockeys not allowed uh, across the border to ride now spring carnival. I put a list up there of jockeys that have the ability, that are gun jockeys that have come out of their apprenticeship. Freddie Kerr, Kersley won a Packenham Cup on Etta James, he stamped himself. Damien Thornton's a Group 1 winning jockey on Toffee Tongue. Geordie Childs wins a Blue Diamond on Written By. Benny Allen was the whiz kid. 16-17, he ran fourth on a uh, senior premiership as an apprentice. Bowie Mertens has come out of his time on the Heatherly on no effort recently. T.O. Nugent, Portland Sky, Oakley Plate and Zach Payne. Streets of Avalon, all these kids can ride. Well... And instead of saying, what about me, it isn't fair, it's now time to put a plan together and say, well, how am I going to get on the best horses for the best trainers and actually pull my finger out and do something about it? It's working with your manager. Your manager's got to sit down. You've got to pick two-year-olds early, three-year-old colts and fillies, sprinters, wait for age horses, stayers, and get on these benchmark horses that are going to turn to listed and stakes horses. The data is there. Those horses are ready to go. You look at your futures markets if you want to peel that back. Then you put a plan together and how are you going to attack it? Ringing the trainers, ringing the owners, um, getting their uh, trust and also your racing and breeders and then getting to work in the gym and putting your hand up. Takes one horse for you to hit the big screen and win a big race and then you're away. It's now time to put a plan together and do that. That was just a group of jockeys I put together and I'm sure there's another dozen of jockeys out there that could be added to that list. So who are yours at home? Should we get that list at the end of the season and say, see how many of them have won a group one? Yeah, absolutely, Paddy, but it's 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 opportunity. It's time to shine right now this year mm. with the uh, COVID bre- um, situation we're Acids on them. I would say Michael Poy is added to that list. Well, funny you mentioned Michael Poy. He's been taken off Ancestry. You go and have a look at his previous couple of months and it's been poor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mickey Poy's jumped straight off the radar. And has he got a ride in the metropolitan area on the weekend? I think that he's got it in him, though. And that's what you're saying, that now is the chance to take advantage on the yeah. opportunities because, I mean, there are jockeys moving off good horses left, right and centre to make way. So there are horses um, that trainers and connections are thinking, well, who's going to ride this? So... I get what you're saying. It's a very yep. good point. It's a good point. So there's there's a way of going about it, Grace, and it's time to go to work for these jockeys now yep. and target it and do something. Step outside of the square. Okay, so now we look ahead to the Valley on Saturday. And last week, as we touched on, you know, there was a really good day. The race... Uh, The track played perfectly and we had plenty of short price favourites getting the job done. Mask Crusader, Probabil, but Jules, you think that it may not be the same tomorrow? Well, it's not going to be because we're going to get plenty of rain. We haven't got any rain at the moment, but it is going to happen, although the Weather Bureau and the uh, COVID modelling are sort of probably running out of par. (laughs) True position, entire circuit, soft range. The the stats that I'm going to give you very shortly in the soft range, we've got the fly over here. You can see that we don't have two sets. In essence, they come out even though there's sort of a 1,200 metre shoot. We all put the results together. As you can see, they sort of race on those kind of uh, same uh, distances and tracks around with the 1,200. So it's just one set of data all together and as we get it up for Mooney Valley. As I stated, working off a soft range. Now you'll see leaders around the Australian average is 20%. For Mooney Valley, it's 15%, 18%. So it's below average for on-speed horses when we get into this soft range with the true uh, track. You can see the wind strike rate for midfield and worse. That's very much peaking. That's high. It's 14% off midfield and 13% back markers wind strike rates, around 8 and 9%. So that's the way the market gravitates. And you can see with the ROI, that really indicates it because still the ROI is positive in leaders and on-speed. Now, that more or less means that the market gravitates away from leaders and horses on speed because yeah. they think those swoopers and back markers are going to get their chance, but they still win enough for it to be a positive play. It's really hard to work out. If we get 10 mils, I think 
this track's probably going to be in soft soft five range. If we get 30 mils and then rain on the day, mm. we're going to be into heavy nine, heavy 10 range. Yep. And usually that rolls back to on speed. Maybe it's hard to make ground. But Jules, it's it was really pretty tricky. fair this meeting fortnight ago. They were able to make ground uh, off speed, and uh, but they stayed away from the fence. They were coming out three and four deep. Uh, as you touched on the scuff marks there, the French uh, the fence is uh, is clean. We're saying, but if that rain comes because it's cambered so well, the water drains into the fence. But then we look at All Star Mile Day and how good did the fence race that day? You needed to be one, two, or three. Anything off uh, three deep on the fence on All Star Mile Day mm. when we had that deluge was no good. You yeah. couldn't make ground. So yeah. it is a wild card what's going to happen over the next you know, 24 hours. Yeah, what you're saying is there's no precedent. Usually we can't say, okay, we go back six months ago and this is exactly what Absolutely. happened and this is how it raced. And that's usually a great sign. For Mooney Valley for this Saturday, it's not so. I think the most important thing for punters out there is 10.30 a.m. insider yep. trading. We're going to have the most update information Ooh. on how this track is Teaser. actually like been. <laughs> I think that's like important. It, it is crucial Good because it's going to be live. <laughs> that's what we do. Live. That is what we do. Yep. Yeah. 10.30 tomorrow morning. Make sure you watch Insider Trading. Now let's take a look at the market for the feature race at the Valley on Saturday. It is the Group 2 Fee and Stakes over 1,600 metres. It's a wait for age event and we've got uh, a pretty compact market here. We've got equal favourites at the top there. $5 Superstorm and Elephant each of two. Now the one that's been supported is Elephant coming off a benchmark 84 win last start. $6 into $5 with sports bets. Sierra Sue's also had some support. Six into five fifty. Then you've got Shot of Irish and uh, $11 there. Nonconformist is an interesting runner. At $13 there, best of days. His best could be good enough. They could go forward now, $16. So it's one of those races where we're going to know a lot more about how these horses are going ahead of some of their respective um, features and their grand finals in the spring carnival. And Sovereign Award is the only other one I wanted to touch on, $46 into $23 early. So that's the way the market sets up. SD, what do you think about the speed in this race? Well, it's firstly? fascinating here because Sovereign Award, um, her first up run was unbelievable. Uh, Jockey couldn't hold her. She bolted out in front, set up a, a brutal tempo. And I would only imagine for her way to beat these wait for age horses. She's a Group 3 winner this track and trip against the mares, rolling along on speed. But for her to beat these wait for age horses first up, she needs to harness a little bit more of that energy. Energy, but um, and then get building from the 700 down the side. So here's a look at a speed map. Uh, what we do know is that Sovereign Ward will jump as soft as she can, soft hands that first furlong and try not to light it up the first 400. She'll definitely roll. Shot of Irish will go forward. These are hard fit horses. Streets of Avalon, they tried to ride him quiet last start. Expect him to roll forward, it didn't work. And then Elephant, the big boy, nearly 17 hands this horse, so he's right on 17 hands. He's drawn the box seat to get a run. Will he get boxed up by best, best of days that'll roll forward? Hard fit Sierra Sue. You don't want to be giving away your advantage on the uh, inside, uh, inside gate. Now the chosen one's got the blinkers on for the first time and then Superstorm, second up bidder, will he jump and want to be as close as he could to best of days and also Sierra Sue. Uh, Dawn Patrol and Port uh, Gulami, Gulami is it? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, say. Yeah, he trolled <laughs> okay at Cranbourne, yeah. but you'd imagine those two imports to jump and settle early doors. This is going to be a brutal tempo. For me, mid race will be the key as to where Elephant gets locked up. He will need to get off the fence with Sierra Sue at some some stage down the side. And the key runner for me here is a horse called uh, Superstorm. Um, this horse was off a long break. He sat out the back. Ollie said, I'm just going to give you a good blowout and have a good feel here. Now, Sierra Sue hits the front. Red can man in front. He loomed up uh, Superstorm here from last, rounded them up. And he then just peeks on his run here and says, right, big blowout. Last early, rounded them up. I saw enough from this horse off a long break first up, and he just peeked on his run. The reason I like him, I go back to simplifying a way for age fee and stakes at this time of the year. Ride the best horse in the race. He is the best horse if he's right. Danny O'Brien's second time with this horse. You win this, you're into the Cox Plate. This is a set play for him to win this race, the fee and stakes, second up. He's got to have him right. Tongue tie comes off him here. Um, at gate five, he can jump, be two pairs back and be ready to go. I reckon... I reckon Danny O'Brien's worked out that he's got this horse right on to, uh, on song. He gets the mile, his all-star mile run, his uh, Caulfield Guineas run, uh, that um, Australian Guineas run was outstanding. 
he's the horse for me that I want to be riding in it. It's interesting, that race that you showed there with Superstorm behind Sierra Seuss, that was on the same day that Elephant won. So they're both coming over 1,400 metres, it was three time. weeks ago. So in terms of the times you work it out, well, they actually were very similar in time overall. It was worth noting that the Elephant race, the first 600 went out a quarter of a second quicker than the Sierra Sioux race. And then the Sierra Sioux race came home a third of a second quicker in the last 400. So they were very similar. But Elephant's a really interesting one because gate one, I don't think is any spoil for him. I think the key in terms of the track on Saturday, if it does get really wet, you need momentum. You need to be coming into the race. So you, as you're suggesting with the map, that if he gets locked up, you just can't sprint off a dime on a really wet track. So that's a concern for him. He, you're right, he has to get moving early at some stage. I'm with the chosen one here. Mm. Um, this is a really tricky race. The Fian sort of sets up as a really weird race, very different to a lot of these early spring races, that you can win it first up. Last four winners have all been first up. Uh, the chosen one's going to be first up here. The blinkers go back on. Usually that's a set play. His best ever figure was in the Herbert Power when the blinkers went on first time. Mm. It's a good camp. I just reckon he swoops into the race. This is a really good horse, and I love the fact that he went over to New Zealand. He was first up. He ran second in a group one over 2,000 metres. That's good enough form for this. It's not a very vintage fan. I don't think yeah. any of these horses that win the fan are going to be running top five in a Cox Plate. We like to play um, with some of these early spring features. Who is the here and now? Um, who's here to win this race? Or who is looking to go on a Caulfield Cup campaign and going to improve, go back and run on? But I can't really find a who is the here and now here. I don't know. Is it Sierra Sue? She's coming off a setback. Is it Elephant? He has to sharply... Uh, rising grades. Well, he's a benchmark horse going to wait for age yeah. for the first time. Yeah. Not too many, we, we very rarely see this, but he needs to know where he's at. And that carrot of winning this and going in to a Cox Plate, and the trainer's already stated his dream is to have a Cox Plate runner. Yep. So it chips in for Elephant yep. if you're on him. Yep. But he just, you would like him to have drawn out a little. He's very progressive. Pat, what do you think? I've just sat back and listened to everything you've said here about Elephant. And, and he is a big, grey, bumbling mess which he's going to burst through and win the race on Saturday. I'm telling you, he had a nice run, as we saw in the box seat. The camp came out and said he was vulnerable that day. He wasn't necessarily ready to go first up. He's fitter and better now and I just think that Elephant is going to be right there mm -hmm. and winning the race. Jules says he's not going to run a top five in the Cox Plate. He's $26 in the Cox Plate now. If he wins, he'll be shorter than that. I like catching horses when, when they're on the up and I think Allison, Elephant is a horse on the way up. Yes, BM84 last start. Got a rising grade. Superstorm is a very, very good horse. But I'm going to be with Elephant. Why not? Money yeah. where the mouth is and, and I'm going to be with Elephant. Well, there's been plenty of market support early to suggest that he can run a good race. Mm, he is that's another very thing. progressive. Paddy could nearly ride him at six foot five. Absolutely. <laughs> He's a big fella, he'll throw that trunk around and uh, get some space, <laughs> don't worry about that, it just do. I am siding with, I found it really hard to work out who the winner of this race is, um, but I'm with non-conformist because if you go back and take a look at that run in the PB Lawrence, a lot of them come through that. He had absolutely no luck, he's a winner at the Valley, I think he'll like the speed on. Um, so at the price, happy to side with non-conformist. Having said that, we know that he's probably being targeted something out over a further trip. So here we can see our tips just in a word, everyone, and your confidence levels. Yeah, Super Storm's the best horse in the race for mine if he's right. Yep. The chosen one. Yep. The big fella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with non-conformers. That's our look at the Fiend Stakes, the feature, but don't go anywhere. There is plenty more on the other side on Free Wide No Cover. There she goes, the Grand Mare. Sunline sprinting away on the turn. She put three lengths now on Sir Clive when they turn for the back. Northerly making ground after Sunline. Sunline two in front. Northerly going out after a Sunline is rolling. Northerly coming after Sunline. Northerly getting up to Sunline and Northerly on the line. Northerly oh, look at that. That is a cracking addition of the fee and stakes. Northerly getting over the line over Sunline. Sunline was a dollar oh one with about 100 metres, 150 metres to go there. But, friends, this is a little segment I've brought to the table, the best ever. So we're going to put a Twitter poll out uh, during the week and just ask the punters what their favourite edition of the uh, feature of the week and is a fan stakes this week. And this was the votes, 41.1% said Northerly uh, v Sunline. El Segundo uh, was third. Humidor last year was fourth Fiorente at 10%. But I know, there's, I, know there's, there, I know there's there. one that you wow. requested get in there. There's not in well, there. Well, 54 rising fast. <laughs> I, you know, he came in and won the Cox Plate, the Caulfield Cup and the Melbourne Cup. Never seen it before. Anyway. You do what you do, mate. It's all your segment. <laughs> we tried to get to the uh, to the uh, Victorian archives to dig up the division, but they didn't have it, mate. The second, so we couldn't put it in. Second time those two great horses met at the Valley too was uh, 
Cox Plate. Yes. Remember that? The yes. finish? Viscount squashed in the middle. Yep. Oh. What How a could we forget? Final yes. 100 that was. Absolutely. Two absolute any, any, champions. Any other notable mentions from the fans of yesteryear? The cleaner won it twice. Of the manor, twice, yeah. Later the manor won it twice. He was a, yeah. uh, a bit of an unsung hero. Fioronte, I saw in there. He went on to win a Melbourne Cup three runs later. Yep. So, um, yeah, it's been a good race. Stepping stone. It has indeed. One of the other races we're going to look ahead to, which has got some star quality about it, is the McEwen Stakes over a thousand metres. This is race five on the program at the Valley. And Portland Sky is our $3 favourite, but has just been a little bit easy. $2.80 out to $3 in early betting. And then you've got September Run, who's been $3.60 into $3.50. Both of those cannot wait to see how they return this campaign. You get to Esther LaRocca at $6. The Inferno has been $8 into $7.50. Maybe out of bounce back having a second start here in Australia. Wisdom of Water is the best of the rest at $11. So two at the top there that are certainly the headline horses, but are they fit enough? Are they ready to go first up? Well, I'll bear my um, backside in Burke Street if Portland uh, <laughs> Sky's not ready to go first up. He's a sprinting machine, this horse. Um, oh, he's just so lightly raced. He's Oakley Plate win here, up on speed. T.A. Nugent's first win. He absorbed a hot speed on this occasion. He was left in front, uh, sitting duck, and he was able to hold on and show his tenacity. What I love is his gate speed. His gate speed and his turn of foot and his high, high cruising speed. Now, he won the Red Anchor. Um, he's also second in a William Reed. He's so lightly raced this horse and he's a sprinting machine. So a thousand metres is his go. And I'm happy that he's drawn out a little bit because Luke Curry, heavyweight jock, no dead weight on his back, forgiving track too, he, would, he doesn't mind, can just ping the lids like he can, roll across at his own leisure. doesn't matter if he's three and four deep getting out of that chute the first time. He will then continue to build, 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 build and roll. The Inferno just over race. They want to ride that horse a little bit quiet second up. Uh, then you've got Wisdom of Water, September run. Is she a 1,000 metre horse around Mooney Valley? I would have thought not with her 1,100 metre wins as a three-year-old and her Coolmore win over six furlongs. I know she ran super, but you've got to look at uh, second in a William Reed to Mass Crusader, uh, Portland Sky. He is the sprinting machine in this and I hope and I think he can go to a next level. I reckon he's primed and he's clearly the best horse. Is there no concern first up? No, not at all. Nothing. He's a sprinter, Pat. He's, he's a, tried like he, a bomb as well. He's, he's prepped up yep. the best he's ever prepped up with here. We've heard so if he's just improved slightly mentally, physically, uh, coming back after winning an Oakley plate off that prep and he's for me on Mars Crusader, he's just got to turn up. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting one. Um, I reckon there's a bit of speed in this. Esther LaRocca inside will go fast. We know that's what she does. I think Sir Callahad will go forward as well. I think Paul and Sky will end up being three wide, which I don't think will be a disadvantage. There's no issue with that. You nailed what happened was going to happen with Behemoth last week, so I'm not going to uh, put you on the spot there with that. <laughs> Outstanding. September run's probably going to get the back, I reckon, of Paul and Sky, maybe two lengths off it. I thought September run. Now, this is the race that Mars Crusader won, um, the William Reed last year. Now, you had to be lanes one, two and three. Look where Portland Sky is. It was lanes one. Now, he finishes second. Outstanding performance, no doubt. September run, the filly at this stage, complete outside. That's not where you wanted to be, and it was a very good performance. This horse did run second in the Lightning Stakes first up. She may not be wound up, but I think she's clearly the best horse in the race. I've marked her clear favourite uh, September run. I think there's some great value in around that $3.60. I've marked her $3.00. I'm really keen with her. I think Esther, I'm going to play in the race. I'm going to back September run. I'm going to back Esther LaRocca because she's going to be the fit horse that's yep. going to get the rail and she might keep going. I'm, I'm not saying Portland Sky can't win. I've just marked him a little bit bigger. He won an Oakley plate on a minimum weight, 50 kilos, mm -hmm. and he had every favour in that race there in the William Reed where he had to be lanes one and two. I just think he's very, very skinny at $2.80, $2.90. I think that September run um, is certainly advantaged by this being a relatively small field as well. She doesn't have to get too yeah. far back. Um, and she's got so much class, so I can't wait to see her. You're going for something a little bit outside of the normal Surely. here, which I'm starting to realise is pretty typical for you. OK. <laughs> oh, call me stupid. Jules, SD, you guys are the brains uh, of the show, uh, of course. No, uh, one's, uh, no yeah. one's wrong before no, the race. No, exactly. Like, yeah, you get the big sort of elephant crash bang wallop <laughs> sort of man like me coming in. <laughs> Watch this replay. This is a horse called Ashlaw. Now, this is the exact same race last year. It's a whole year ago, but I just want to highlight that when this horse can get it together on his day, he can produce something. And he comes second this day, stiff. Uh, Bella Valor goes on to win a Group 1, um, or had won a Group 1 before this, is uh, the horse that he runs second to. So he can, he can produce something on his day. 
Now, I want to be with him just off, purely off the back of his last start where he ran third to Esther La Rocca. Esther La Rocca is $6 in this race. Ashlaw is $35. I just think he's over the odds. It could be a sloppy day at Mooney Valley. You get up there in the box seat. He could get first look at the, as they come around the bend, get first look at the straight. And uh, I think at $35 when he can make his own luck, he's a real ancient type old Ashlaw, but I think he could run a sneaky <laughs> race and an, and, an, and an each way bet. And I could look like the biggest dundead of all time here next week in what's the damage, grace, damage, or I could look like a feeding <laughs> At $35, I mean, he's no, got No, he's a point. got nothing to lose. He's exactly. taking $31. If you're, if you're going to have a bet at a big price, $31, you're not going to look like an idiot because mm. at the end of the day, you, the price is on your side. The market's thinking it's a 3% chance. So yep. um, why not? He's, he's, he's drawn in a position to, to get a lovely run. He might fall out the back of the telly, as you like to say, Jules. Mm. But I'm hopeful that he can be up there and make his, a little bit of his own luck, just sit off the pace and bang. Hopefully. All right, so we we've produce. got one Ash Law and we've got a Portland Sky and we've got two September runs. While I would just like to clarify, I'm sitting on the fence, really. Oh, nice. I actually think yeah, Bold Star can run a good race um, as well. Now, last week, Jules touched on the Group 1 Sir Rupert Clark Stakes and we're going to go back to the futures on that race again. We are, Grace. Yes, that's <laughs> thing. Fantastic. All right, let's the market for the Sir Rupert Clark, which is in September 18, a couple of weeks ago. Probably went to the top of the market five dollars $5 after winning last week. Got Bo Rosser at six, Ayrton at seven. We know he's not going there. Behemoth's the same price. Darla San will be, I think, first up this week. Amish boy. Let's look at a profile of this race. I think this is the important thing to work out. Can some horses get in there? What you need from a lower rating point of view. And let's look at the last five or six winners. Behemoth last year carried 60 kilos. It was a 54 limit. It won't be a 54 limit this year. It'll be 52. The minimum rating was 98. So the lower horses, you needed a rating of 98, your domestic rating. Be good to your mother, one with 52 kilos. It wasn't a full field, so forget about your rating. Jungle Cat, it won. You needed to have 97. Santa Ana Lane won. You needed to be a rating of 80. So that was fine, and then not a full field with Bonorum. Then Stratum Star and Trust and Agast, you needed around 99 and not a full field. Those ratings on the side, the important thing here is if you're having an early bet, you need to know what your domestic rating of your horse is. So let's get up the horses that are in the market that I think are key factors here. Behemoth. I think it's, look, after winning on Saturday at Memsey Stakes, they haven't put a rating here. I think it goes back to 114, which will give it a weight of 59 kilos on a 52 minimum. There'll be seven kilos difference. That's what I think that horse will get. The required rating is what it needs to win with 59 kilos. That's off my ratings. It did 112 last start in the Memsey Stakes and its peak rating was in this race in the Rupert Clark last year with 114. It can win the race. That's why they're highlighted in yellow. Probabile, I think, gets 57 and a half kilos. It's got a rating of 115. Two kilo allowance for being a mare, obviously, and it's got a rating higher. Instant Celebrity will get a four kilos off it. It's done the job before, 110 is its peak rating. Bo Ross is the interesting one. No rating in. I think its rating probably could be from 100 mm. to 104, to be honest. I think 102 gets, it a kilo, gets the weight of 53 kilos. Is that and off the back of his weight for age second? Correct. So they haven't given a rating yet, and I think they're trying to work out how much difference between Behemoth and Bo right. Rosser they want. They're obviously on level weights, but Behemoth's won three or four group ones. Bo Rosser hasn't. So I think he'll get 53 kilos, meaning his domestic rating is 102. He did a rating of 111 with me last start. He only needs to do 108 if he has 52 and a half or 52 mm. kilos. Wow. He's the horse. Is that far right? Yep. What you speculate the horse can get to? No, the far right is its peak rating that it's already done. Yeah. So that was its rating that it did uh, last start, obviously, which was its last start rating in the Memsey Stakes. Yep. The ones on the left I had, Anton won't mm. go there. Yep. And Amish Boy, it's rated 96. So the issue mm. with Amish Boy is getting in the race. And yeah. if you yeah. back it now, and it nominates and misses out, you do your cash cold. So just be careful on a horse like Amish Boy, Corner Pocket, those kinds of horses. Their rating's too low, regards Marie. The key is Corner Pocket might run next week in a Sofitel, 1,400 metres, and get its, and then go on the quick backup and get its rating up. The problem is it's going to run into a horse called Ayrton, probably not going to win. It's really tricky. For the punters out there, the best horse to be backing is Bo Rossa. It starts clear favourite. If I was going to say, if they, the two horses I'd be wanting to back out of that, if they were going to run now and qualified, are Bo Rossa and Amish Boy. Mm. Yep, I agree with that. And the key is Amish Boy's just got to get in. So it's the trick. I'd probably wait till the nominations come out for it. But Bo Rossa, Will Clarkins come out and said the horse is going to run. Yep. If it does go or awry in the next two weeks, he won't nominate. So you don't have to worry about it. You get your cash back. Bo Rossa, he'll start clear favourite in my opinion. How good was that? Only... Oh, fantastic oh. information, Jules. Sure. More of that, please. Get to a break. <laughs> <laughs> if only Amish boy got the chockies on the weekend, though, he could have already. Oh, so stop it. Long story. Yes. We don't stop have time it, don't. for that right yeah. now. Too we soon, need to get to a if, break. If, if, and on if. the other side, we'll be looking at the three-year-old fillies back in the Atlantic Jewel Stakes.
set to go and away. Our win spirit away fairly. Widest up around the turn, about two off the lead from our win spirit. Then came Zorro's dream miss in between and simply optimistic. Into the straight, 300 to go. Destination's lifting. Still dirty thoughts from He's a Bolter. Destination in the middle. A thrusting go. He's a Bolter's just got there from oh, Destination. Look at that. Dirty He's a Bolter. It's a beautiful beer and it's a beautiful racehorse as well. Linham H, that is a peach. Three wide ride right of the week goes to you. The horse was maybe four or five wide right around the <laughs> but three or, or more wide. Well. But special mention to a fellow named Lee Davies who sent a horse in from uh, up far north Queensland. A bit hard to get the footage up there, but uh, no, he's a bolter. Gets the chockies and we'll be doing that every week. What do you think of the ride and the win? Yeah, just flowing into... Uh, oh, she didn't have a complicated, to be honest. She was drawn out a little bit on speed and it's just the one bend to get around. South Australian horses, hard fit, going very well. And Will Clarkin's team, well done, mm -hmm. Will. You're placing them well. Nicely done there, Pat and Linda. Now, let's look at the three-year-old fillies in the Atlantic Jewel Stakes. This is a quality field. The favourite here, Argentia, we see her return for Anthony and Sam Friedman. She's got a lot of hype about her. She's $3.60 at the moment and steady with sports bets. Scorched Earth is on the second line of betting at $5. And you've got Literary Magnate, who's been $7 to $6.50. Zuzarella, last start winner, $7 out to $8. Mac and Cheese is an exciting filly as well at $8.50. So... La Rock is another fascinating runner, five weeks between runs, and she's $13. I thought she was enormous first up. And Commands the Field has been specced, $31 into $26. Jules, I know that you're going to tell us that we need to wait and see what happens, A, with the market, and B, how they've returned. But do you have any horse here that you're particularly excited to see? Oh, I think there's some really good quality fillies. Now, hopefully they can develop into... A-grade fillies. We don't know yet, and I know Argenta was outstanding winning up the straight at its first go, and that's Paul points to this horse being really good, but it's one from one. <laughs> it's not five from five. We can't stamp it yet, but it's going to be interesting to see how it performs on Saturday. Just quickly in terms of the map, I think Queen of Dubai, Larkspur, Run, Go Forward, Scorch Earth probably sits in the first four or five, and then the rest of these horses that are in the market probably a negative neutral from the gate, and they may be able to blend into the race. Oh, I found this really tricky. I've marked um, Argentia the favourite around three seventy three dollars eighty. So no real spoil on the price there, but I'm not sinking my boots into it. It's a horse that's got plenty of ability. We know. I've actually gone with Literary Magnate. It mm -hmm. was outstanding, winning on debut at Warnable in a really wet track. So I love that that it can get through the ground. And then last start got beaten by a very very good sprinter called Voldemort. We won't talk about him, Grace <laughs> Finance Tycoon, who's obviously not with the stable anymore. Wow. That's why we're talking about that Whack. horse. And he could be anything, Finance Tycoon. But that was a really really high rating race when yep. it ran second. I think it's a really good horse, this yep. literary magnate. And I think it'll get through the ground and be really competitive in what is a very open race. It's a race that I'm not going to be betting in. I will preface that. I will say that to the punters out there uh, for clarity mm -hmm. because I just, as I've spoke about, these early three-year-old races, really tricky. I want to see them, learn, and then we go from there. Can someone tell me why Zuzarella is $8 and $7 out to $8? Because she won this race over an unsuitable distance, but not just that, SD, but at an unsuitable race shape. She was out the back on a slow tempo. We know she's a mile and she showed a really nice turn of foot to win. Isn't she going to be better suited again? Yeah, a bit of juice in the track on this occasion, Grace. She she just won, got the job done on debut, but being a small field and slow tempo, she was a great ride by Brady Preble. He was close enough uh, leading into the 500 uh, and rolling into that Mooney Valley bend, so she had her gears wound up and she was able to roll over the top of them. Uh, it's interesting for me where she gets to in this race from gate seven. I would imagine, I know it's a set play for her to then move on to 8,000 Guineas is her target this time in. Uh, the team haven't made their decision on uh, the favourite in the race, which is Argentia at this stage. Look, she's a good price. Wouldn't talk you out of backing Zuzarella. But Argentia, this is a filly by Frankel, having her first run down the straight, sitting off the speed in a wall of uh, horses. Uh, Invincible Caviar and the Greens come out and won at sales since. Frank the form a little bit. Um, but what we saw here was just all natural ability. And amazing. Uh, it, was, it, it was a, a gallop from a season runner on debut and what I mean by that she was able to sit in behind a wall poked out inside the 400 metre mark and then the gears that she was able to let down and then run away from a herd uh, with plenty left on being by Frankel being put away by team Friedman they're like right she's got she's got a lot of common sense mm -hmm. and she's up and going pretty early I like this six furlong gallop their speed drawn inside now for her to draw uh, barrier two just to sit one or two pair back you'll find that um, you'll find that Damien Oliver takes the ride now he'll just 
poke off the fence and give yourself that little bit of room and ask them to work early doors. Uh, bad luck, I think, um, will cost her the victory in this race. I like her upside. I like the fact she was backed into 10s into 650 on this occasion um, when she won on debut. And I just like her acceleration and turn of foot too. So it sets up perfectly for her. I think she's something special. Mm -hmm. And I think the team haven't made a decision on her whether she's a cool more horse or a thousand guineas horse at this particular point of time. And the X factor being by Franklin showing that turn of foot, uh, I think she could be something special. I'm not going to say that she is at the moment because, as Julesy mentioned, they're lightly raced, these three-year-old fillies. But um, I'm going to suggest that she's the winner of this race and I'm going to suggest she could be a cool more type of horse out interesting, of it. Interesting. Very interesting, Pat. I'm going to take her on just quickly. Zuzarella, I love the horse. I just think she's running into better horse flesh here and we'll mm -hmm. find it tough. Brady Preble as well, riding broom six to victory at the moment, going very well. Julie. This is how well he's going. Six from 22, 27%. Market expectation at 12% in the Metro, so he's exceeding it. You're making money off Brett Preble. I, I, I love the man. Love you, Brady. But uh, <laughs> I'm a scorched earth. I think just Fitness Edge, um, last start we were um, just one length behind Gimme Par. Just brings a little bit more fitness into this. Can sit in the box seat, maybe get um, pull out and have a straight down the Second crack. up one of uh, Magic Means in Adelaide is too. Uh, and hey, travel. One, one at the Good track experience. Distance, scorched earth. And mm, it's, yep. it's brought a bit of market support in the market. So uh, this would be the, the toughest race for me of the day. So I'm going to be with Scorched Yeah. Earth. Wide open race. Can't wait to see how these fillies measure up against each other and hopefully we get a good guide for some of the features going forward as well. So uh, that's our look at the Atlantic Jewel Stakes. Now, don't go anywhere because we're going to have a look around the country and see where we might be able to have a bet on the other side of this quick break. Let's look around the country now and see where we are going to find some bets. And we're going to start at Randwick SD, a huge day up in New South Wales. Yeah, nags to riches, dropping back from the 12 to the 1100. It's a good gallop behind more profits. Gets back, got to the outside on that occasion. Just peaked on the run, finds a weaker race here. I love the claim with 55 and a half, 25 at Randwick. Race seven, number one, Zaki. Just worth noting, there's plenty of rain about Saturday. Good conditions, but this track might end up rain affected, so just be careful there, punters. But I'm with Zaki. Race seven, number one. He's 1,400 metres, obviously not ideal. He'll be winning. I don't think he'll get beaten for the rest of the prep. He wow. is a superstar. Mm -hmm. The numbers that he was putting up in Brisbane, we hadn't seen since her, and we're getting double figures about Zaki. It's outstanding. And race eight, number 12, Kukaracha. I'm just against that form, the very elegant form that Moanga won. I don't know if that was outstanding form, and this one uh, came out of a really fast run race behind Burdebeck. This is a Queensland Derby winner. I reckon Kukaracha at a price can run really well for you. Pat? I'm buttonheads with you. I'm with the form. She's ideal. Came out of that uh, wing stakes, which very elegant was in. She ran well at a big price. Ran in the top three. I think she can run a good race here in the Chelmsford at uh, Randwick. She's ideal for me. So that's Chelmsford Stakes Day at Randwick. What about Eagle Farm? You wouldn't believe it's race two, number five again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Secret Tales, this horse, had two gallops this time in, 1,000 and the 12 unsuitable. Last preparation, one, two in a row over 1,400. Jumps from 12 to a mile wide. This is a cutest race, this horse, and 24,000 bonus and also a $12,000 bonus for a three-year-old filly. She's a three-year-old filly. It's a set play from this stable to target this race. I love the way they've planned this out. So 1,000, 1,200 to the mile, and it's two wins at 14 last time with the cutest bonus. Two, five, Secret Tales. Royal hail for me up at Eagle Farm. This horse made light work of this grade last start. Jaden Lloyd goes on again, claiming three kilos and drawn very well. I am very, very confident. Royal hail. Race nine, number three, Dusty Tycoon. Quick seven day back up, coming out of a fast run race. The last 200 metres is going to be a problem. 1,400 is definitely a query, but I think it'll be hard to run down back at each way. They're short. Sure. Oh, sorry. Sorry, SD, you go. Yeah, I was just uh, hurrying up here. Smoke and Val and also Melody Man in Adelaide. They're both short, but they should be winning. Good, very good. <laughs> There's plenty to be um, taking note of here. I hope everyone has their pens and paper. What about Morphiful? Who's got a bet there? Not me. I think he just said something. Yeah. But it was a rambling. So he's, uh, he's hurrying up by slowing down. I've got one at Morphville. Enchantingly, this horse uh, got the first city winner for this camp fortnight ago. A big, fa another favourite of the race is out. Got scratched last night. So enchantingly for me, is a big, big chance here. Now let's go to Belmont. Who Ra wants to start? Race six, number six, La Farolo. <laughs> Very good first up. Just ran out of fitness in the last hundred metres. Parnham goes back on. It's a four-year-old near the minimum weight. That's what we want to be this time of the year. 
consistent type over the 1,000 metre journey at Belmont is I see red, I see red, I see red, and that's all I'll be with. Okay, so now I'm looking ahead to DeLong on Sunday. Um, and I've got two horses that I'm quite keen on here. We've got a debutante from the Anthony and Sam Friedman stable who is a full sister to Shoals and also Groundswell. Her name is Fjord. She's here on debut, and I have absolutely love what she's done at the jump outs and at the trials. So watch her in race three. And then a little bit later on um, in the program, a horse coming back from Sandown last start to what looks to be a winnable race here. And at a huge price, $19 is Deal Blaster. I think he represents value there. So that's uh, our look ahead to around the country. Now here we're going to see all of that. So maybe take a screenshot because we're very yep. tech savvy on this show, aren't we? That's right. Get the cameras out. So there it is all there. And um, hopefully we can replicate what we did last week, which was pretty astonishing, team. So good luck all. Now, through the roof, what have you got for us? Yeah, we go to Echuca for this one, Grace. Um, this is a really good performance. Last week we nailed it with Bifrost, obviously on runs on Saturday, and your horse Holt ran second, came out and bolted in at Mowie. This horse is called Lena's Legend. This was a very good performance. First up at 1,300 metres, one and a third second inside standard time, which we'd love, but the last 400, 200 was very good. Last 200, I think, was the best on the day by a quarter of a second. Follow Lena's Legend. I think this horse can go to town immediately and be very, very competitive. competitive. It's a nice three-year-old. Time for another quick break on three wide, no cover, but on the other side, we'll have some valuable information from Jules as to the pricing of some of the horses on Saturday. Welcome back to three wide, no cover. Jules, yes. who do you deem that the price is wrong for on Saturday? <laughs> Okay, so a few here I think the market hasn't cottoned on to yet. Generation 310, I think it just comes out of the right form race. I've got no, worried, uh, no worries about that horse being wide. It might be the place to be at Mooney Valley on Saturday. Marked it $2.70. Bifrost, uh, it was our through the roof last start, $11. Marked it $7.50. I think it'll tighten up. De Graves, the one for me, $4.20 out there. Marked it $3.60, claiming under the minimum on a wet track, yes. September run, I think she starts favourite. That's my opinion. Marked her $3. Larkspur runs an interesting one up from down from Sydney. $15 out there. This rain comes. I think she probably just get this horse will probably start closer to single figures. I marked it $10. Kelkani Royale, it's an emergency, but again, the rain comes. I marked it $13.19 out there in Skyman. I've marked it $3.350 out there at the moment. Here's the three that I think the market's really found. So Heart of Poissant, $4.40. I've marked it $5.50. I really like Heart of Poissant as a horse, but I just think with the pressure, with the graves in terms of the market percentage and also Coolth, I think it drifts. Portland Sky, I know um, it's going to be very popular, but I've marked it $4.00. Just I think September run ends up starting favourite, but again, my opinion and High Stranger. I've marked it $9.00 and it's on a winning streak, but it's $5.00 out there. I think it drifts. Heart of Poisson, I think the last two weeks you've made it your best of the day just yeah. about. Yeah, I have. Scratched on the day both days. Yeah. And now you're putting it in the bin. He's a really good horse and he can be very competitive in a Bart Cummings, but I'm just a bit worried about this race with DeGraves carrying 51 kilos on a really wet track. And I know Heart of Poisson loves wet tracks, so there's no issue with that. But the percentage has got to go somewhere, and I think it's going to go with the Graves, and I think it's going to go with Coulth also with Damien Lane at 54 kilos. For that to happen, mm -hmm. then I think something's got to drift, and I think it's harder to put on. So I think the market was against it last start. It wasn't two starts ago before it got scratched. It was last start, and now I just think the market will just slightly push against is, it. Is he going to get scratched again on race day? Well, I hope way? not because he's running out of chances to get a, he's running out of chances to get fit. And I know that camp will get it fit enough, but he's got to get into a Bart Cummins to try and it's, make his way into a Melbourne Cup. It's yeah. frustrating. And, and last week it was it was from a track upgrade, wasn't it? No, it was because I think he hurt his leg. Yeah, okay, I'm pretty sure he's yeah. Yeah. like Gray's here. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that's great. Well done, Jules. There's plenty more to come, though. And we've got the Quaddy and also our $5 horse up next. Time to firstly look back at how we fared with the Quaddy last week, which was on Memsey Stakes Day at Caulfield, and someone failed. And uh, I don't know who that person was, but that's okay. Right. It was your exact words. I want to get the punters off to a good start. Yeah. No, I actually week. didn't say that. No. I said I wanted to be amicable and make sure that everybody's horse was included. Too bad that none of you tipped no effort. Hearing this shit and it's out it's of it's control, Yes, your fault. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's focus on um, Fan Stakes Day at the Valley. SC, yeah. you're starting. Yeah. One. Atlantic Jewels. Scorched Earth, uh, Libiamo, Zuzarella, Argentia, and also Literary Magnate. Wild Planet, Away Game, Riddle Me That, Bella Nipatina, 
And then Express Pass and Kelkani Royale. Wow. Now, they need scratchings for those two to get in, but if they do, it'll be wet and they can be really competitive. Any, any ink left in that pen, mate? Oh, OK, go on. This <laughs> so, be, yeah, where's um, Pat's go? <laughs> oh, it's Grace first, sorry. <laughs> I've got the Fiend Stakes and I've got five horses. Best of days, the chosen one, Superstorm, Nonconformist, Elephant. Best of days, I just thought, could bob up in a race like this. Pat, mm. what are you bringing us home with? Got Let's five, not listen. Got five horses. Oh, one, no. two, three, four, nine. Oh. Those horses, number one, Cormorant, number two, Ice Change, number three, Skyman, number four, Viral last start winner at the track. And then number nine, Tory Joy could get up there on the speed and uh, boil over with it at a nice price. All right, so we've all gone pretty wide here. Yeah, right. well, it's, it's one of those days. Yeah. I mean, last week, yeah. as we spoke about, it ran so straight, so you expected it. We obviously missed the split with no effort. We weren't on our own there. Yep. But this week, if you get it, I think the 11% is going to pay over the 100. So that's just the way it, it, it pans out. Good. Good luck, team. $100 for 11%. Oh, it's hopefully. All right, $5 horse. Oh. We did well last week. So it's called $5 horse because we all started with $5 in our bet with Mates Group. We want to build that kitty up. It's a little bit like a let it ride, but we've got the luxury of, you know, one horse loses and we still can make money elsewhere. Last week we got three out of four and we turned the kitty into about 40 into exactly $40. So that's what we've got to play with. I think we still stick with a $5 bet at the moment until we build it a little bit more. I'm with the big boy, the big trunk. Elephant for me, my $5 bet. Yeah, I let the team down last week with the gouch. Um, Argentia. Okay. This week. What about you? Get it early. Sandy Prince, thinking you can control the race. It's going really well. Wet tracker. Make sure it's eating and doing the right things, please. <laughs> I'm going with Mr Brightside from there the same go. stable. I think that he gets a really good chance on speed um, to showcase his great turn of foot and he's got an outstanding sprint and they might not be able to get past him if he finds himself on speed, SD. I know you have a different opinion. No, he's shooting for four, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, is, I've taken yeah. him on on get on, sorry. Yep. But, yeah. If um, yeah, we can get a couple of them home, we yes. keep building that kitty. I know. The big end goal here. Stop it. Yes, we're trying, to buy, we're trying to buy a racehorse. Yeah, we're good. We're trying to buy a racehorse, so good. we've got $40 in the kitty. What about a greyhound first, and then maybe a racehorse? Let's shoot for the stars and aim in the clouds, Esther. Yeah, that's true. Sport of true. King. Sport of king. If we can't true. afford the horse, we're going to get the trainer. Who are we going to Who's going to train the horse? I'm sure there'll be plenty of people out there. Grace, do you know anyone? I know a couple of people. Okay. We can sort that out. Can we do a little deal? Um, probably not for yeah. you, Pat. Sorry about that. <laughs> would $40 buy a good horse? <laughs> no, it certainly wouldn't. But look, we're going to keep trying in that space. That's yes, the aim of on. the game, the $5 horse. Uh, so that's three wide, no cover. Now, we've got a massive show on Insider Trading tomorrow. It's going to be so key, isn't it, Jules? Because at this stage, we don't really know what's going to happen, but we'll know at 10.30 tomorrow. It hasn't started raining yet, but it will rain. And then we're <laughs> going to know all the information of how much has fell on the track and, you know, mm. how this track's going to play. So really, really really essential viewing for the punters out there. Last week's show was bang on too. You would have had a fill up if yep. you were a punter watching insider trading. So it was slick. 10.30 this week. Loved it, it is 10.30. So make sure you tune in to Insider Trading uh, at 10.30 tomorrow on racing.com. It is going to be a massive day at the Valley. Fee and Stakes Day. We cannot wait. And we hope that you have enjoyed another episode of Three Wide No Cover. We will catch you next time. <laughs>